All right. Here we introduce the concept of Lebesgue integration. So we start with the triple of objects which represent the measure space, and we specifically ask for finite measure space, which means that the measure of the universal set X is measurable. Now the definition of the Lebesgue integral and Lebesgue integral. Uh, the definition of the Lebesgue integrable function and the Lebesgue integral it's a two-stage definition first we introduce the concept for the simple function which is the function of the following structure it's the sum of the scaled indicators of the subsets a n where subsets where subsets a n are measurable subsets which produce the partition of the universal set and uh, Little a's are just real number, real numbers. Now we call this kind of function, simple function, Lebesgue integrable, if and only if the following series converge. For the abbreviation purposes, we will abbreviate the statement f is Lebesgue integrable by this writing. Uh, we will approach this symbol more formally a bit later, but for now, when you see something like this, you just interpret this, that the function f is Lebesgue integrable. Well, right now we just we just talk about the simple function f. For such function, which is Lebesgue integrable in, in this sense, the Lebesgue integral is given by the following value. Something like this. Now, before we can, before I will define the uh, the Lebesgue integral function in the very generality, and before I can give you the definition for the Lebesgue integral, I need this auxiliary lemma, which is applicable to the Lebesgue integration of simple functions as defined up here. So the lemma says it says a few parts of it. First one says that the simple function f is integrable if and only if the absolute value, which also be by the way simple function, is integrable. Uh, the part B says if two simple functions f and g are integrable, then the linear combination of those two is also the bag integrable for any for any scalars alpha and beta, and uh, we have a connection between the integrals. The integral of the linear combination is a linear combination of individual integrals, quite expectable property, and that's again f and g here, simple functions only in this. Uh, but C says, if you have a simple Lebesgue integral function and you have another simple function such that its absolute value controlled by the first function, then the second function is also Lebesgue integrable. And we also have that the absolute value of the integral of the function G is controlled by the integral of the function F. And the last property, which I need in order to give you the definition of the Lebesgue integrable function in very generality, is this one. If I have, if I just have a function, simple function again, which is uniformly bounded, so this supremum is finite, and if I just abbreviate this supremum with the capital letter A, then this function will be Lebesgue integrable, and the integral of the absolute value of that function is controlled by the product like this. Uh, I think that's in this, it, it is for the purpose of this last property in this lemma, we assume that the measure space is finite because otherwise this factor will not be a finite number. Right, now we can give a definition of the big integrability. So any function, any measurable function, f is a measurable function, it is, we will call it Lebesgue integrable. Again, we don't put any other meaning into this symbol, into this writing, other than just saying that this measurable function is Lebesgue integrable. We will look at this symbol with more formal approach later, but for now, this is just means f is Lebesgue integrable, and that's the definition of it. Uh, this is, we will say so, if and only if there is a sequence of simple functions which converge to f uniformly and the supremum of the Lebesgue integrals of the absolute value of these functions, so such a supremum is finite number. So the sequence, this is a sequence of numbers. This sequence of numbers, this sequence of numbers, 
is, of, uh, is bounded from above after some point and we know that this integrals here they are just defined according to this formula because the functions here are simple in fact I can equivalently say here I can equivalently say here that lean soup when n when n goes to infinity of these integrals of simple functions is a finite number this is the same effect so existence of such a not equivalent to just claiming that we have a limb soup finite like this now in case we have this say subsequence sorry in case we have this sequence of simple functions uniformly convergent to f with this extra property we set the Lebesgue integral of my original function to be the limit of the Lebesgue integrals of this individual individual simple functions approximating simple functions I can say now this definition needs correctness uh, uh, I will not prove the lemma in these comments but I will use this lemma now to establish the correctness of this definition and the this correctness will involve a few stages checking the correctness of this definition will involve a few stages a few stages so here's here it is first thing we observe that the CNs if I call this number CNs then these numbers will be finite after some point after this point and not because the supremum is finite uh, yes and the and the absolute value of the integral like this is controlled by the integral of the absolute value this is clear from the part C of the lemma uh, from this inequality in part C in, of the lemma. So the second part of this correctness verification is that the fact that if I take the difference like that, difference of these two numbers, which will be difference of these integrals like that, two integrals like that, then by the help uh, with the help of the part B of the lemma, I can convert it into this kind of difference, and with the help of the part C again, I can convert it into this. Thing. Now, with the help of part D, I can conclude that this last piece in my inequality is controlled by the product like this. Now, because my sequence Fn converged to F uniformly, it means that this is vanishing when indices n and k go to zero, sorry, go to infinity independently which means that the this expression will go to zero when n and k goes to the infinity independently which means which means that the sequence is Cauchy when the real when the sequence of real numbers is Cauchy it means that this sequence has a limit and that's why this limit which is here truly exists subject if these two conditions are met uh, that's the first part of the correctness of the definition that this number is in fact is always uh, it always exists. Now, the last part of the correctness verification is uh, is this one. If I have another sequence of simple functions, GNs, which also converge to F uniformly, I have to prove that for this new sequence, this condition will also be true. And uh, this limit will deliver the same number. Now, for the condition like this look at this what I can say because Fn converge sorry because Gn converge to F uniformly and Fn converge to F uniformly if you take the difference of Gn and Fn with the help of the triangle inequality we will have that the limit of the difference between these two will go to zero this is not limb soup this is limb of supremums and that's a supremum which is taken over the uniform subs uh, over the universal space X in particular this means that there is a number index and not such that after this index this quantity this supremum will be less than any given number and I choose this number to be 1 so there's an index and not such that for every index and larger than this than this and not this supremum will be less than or equal than 1 now all I have to do I have to use this simple triangle inequality which says that the GN 
of x is like a, if I take the absolute value of this number, I can just alter this number like this, I plus fn and I minus fn. Now your triangle inequality splits this like this. And all I have to observe now is that the the, the bag integral of this function is controlled by the Lebeg integral of this function. This is the property C. And that's I, I actually the other comment which I have to make. Uh, this is a simple function. And this, uh, this together is a simple function because the difference of two simple functions, it's a simple function. So it's a minus statement which I used here without saying, but now I'm actually saying it. And uh, the sum of two simple functions is also the simple function. And the absolute value of the simple function is also the simple function. So we have one simple function controlled by the other simple function, which means that the Lebesgue integral of this one is controlled by the Lebesgue integral of this one. And that's why the supremum of those Lebesgue integrals will also be controlled by the sum of the supremums of Lebesgue integrals of these two simple functions. Now, this one is a finite number. We know this because fn was a sequence like that. And this one, we can control this by saying that by the help, with the help of the path, path d again, because the supremum of this difference is controlled by 1. And so the whole thing is controlled by the measure of x. And that's why the supre this supremum is also finite. So it's a half of the path 3, because we just show that the if I have any other sequence which converge uniformly to f, any other sequence of simple functions, then for that sequence this will also be true. Now we have to show that this other sequence will deliver the same limit. This will follow from this observation. Uh, indeed, indeed, all we have to observe is that uh, if I have a difference like that, if I have a difference of numbers in, uh, appearing in this limit, and different of numbers which appear in a similar limit for a new sequence gn, then the first I can first I can convert this into the just the difference of two functions fn and gn with this property, property b of my lemma, and then I can use the property c again to convert it into something like this. And I will have this inequality. Now with the help of the part d, I can exercise this control. And that's all I need because this supremum converges to zero. This is a fixed number. It's again we use the fact that we live in the in the finite measure space. And we have that this limit of this absolute value difference is zero, which means that the this limit delivers the same number as the limit of this numerical sequence. And that finishes the proof of the correctness of the definition of the back integral and the back integrable function.